Our next lesson in Unit 7 is Lesson 33, Oregon, Texas, and War. So our teaks that we can identify westward expansion, we always want to be able to put events into chronological order. That we can explain how manifest destiny is related to westward expansion. Here's an important one, 6D, that we can explain how and why we fought the U.S.-Mexican War and what its effects were. That we can identify the Oregon Territory, Texas Annexation, Mexican Cession, and Gadsden Purchase as lands that were added to the U.S. And that finally we can identify ways in which conflicts with people of different racial backgrounds were resolved. Our story so far. So to review, in 1803 the U.S. requires the Louisiana Purchase from France for $15 million. It doubles the size of the U.S., but just as importantly, the U.S. now owns the valuable Mississippi River and the important port of New Orleans. In 1818, in a treaty with Britain, the border between the U.S. and Canada is set at the 49th parallel, extending as far as the Oregon Territory, which is still in dispute. And then in 1819, the U.S. adds Florida through a treaty, the Adams-O'Neill Treaty, with Spain. So at this point, the U.S. now owns all the land east of the Mississippi River, as well as the Louisiana Territory. Now let's go back to seventh grade for a moment and talk about our Texas history in review. As we learned last year, Texas was part of Mexico, but during 1823 to 1835, a number of American immigrants came to Texas as part of the empresario system, and soon they outnumbered the native Mexican population in Texas. If you might remember, we talked about the Miri Turan report, in which the Mexican government was very concerned about this development and this growth in the American population. They tried to stop American immigration to Texas. This grew to the point of where in 1835 to 1836, the Texas Revolution was fought, and the Texans ultimately defeated the Mexican army at, under Santa Ana at the Battle of San Jacinto and won their independence in the Treaties of Velasco. So for a number of years, about nine years, we had the independent Texas Republic, but by 1844 they were ready to become part of the U.S. and be annexed as a state. However, Mexico had never really officially recognized Texas independence or acknowledged the loss of Texas and had threatened to go to war with the United States should they ever try to annex it. So the question was, was the U.S. willing to risk war in order to annex Texas? So this leads us to the election of 1844, and the Democratic candidate was Lucius Malfoy. You might remember him. He's the father of Draco and one of Voldemort's death. E oh, guys, I'm so sorry. I hate it when I do this. I meant... James K. Polk. But you look at the picture there, Lucius, Polk, I think you can understand the mistake. Sorry about that. Let's move ahead. Anyway, James K. Polk was the Democratic candidate. He was a strong believer in Manifest Destiny, which we discussed back in Lesson 31. He supported the annexation of Texas, and annexation means to add land. So he wanted to add Texas to the U.S. He also supported the U.S. claims to Oregon, which was disputed by Great Britain. Uh, between the U.S. and Canada. His campaign slogans included 54-40 or fight and all of Oregon or none. By 54-40 he's talking about that latitude line 54 degrees 40 minutes which is in today present-day Canada. He was opposed by Hen uh, Henry Clay who was the Whig candidate and Clay opposed the annexation of Texas because he did not want to provoke war with Mexico and also because the Whigs opposed the spread of slavery and did not want to add the slave state of Texas to the Union. Now, these positions caused Clay to lose the support of southern and western voters who wanted to add this land. So, as a result, Polk wins in a very close election. So, instead of going to war over Oregon, again, here's that 5440 line. So, they wanted to claim all of this territory. Instead, we have a peaceful treaty with Britain in which we extend the 49 degrees, the 49th parallel that was already there, just stretch that all the way out to the Pacific Ocean and divide the Oregon Territory. And from that we get the modern day states of Washington, Oregon, Idaho, parts of Montana, and parts of Wyoming. So that was accomplished peacefully. Texas, on the other hand, was a different matter. In December 1845, the U.S. annexed Texas as its 28th state, and this made the Mexican government furious. And on top of that, the U.S. claimed that the Rio Grande River was its southern border between the U.S. and Mexico, and that this border extended all the way up through here, through New Mexico into Colorado, and this created this large territory that they claimed as Texas. Uh, Mexico, on the other hand, claimed that the border was at the Nueces River and that this was the southern border of the United States. So what we have here is this large area, this disputed territory, that is claimed by both Mexico and Texas. 
President Polk ordered troops into the Rio Grande area, commanded by General Zachary Taylor, and ordered them to patrol the disputed area, and on May 1846 they were attacked by Mexican troops, and in these battles 16 Americans were killed. So now Polk goes to Congress and claims that Mexico has invaded U.S. territory and asked Congress to declare war on Mexico. And in this speech he makes the famous quote, American blood has been shed on American soil. So the question is, did Polk send these soldiers down deliberately to provoke a war? And that's generally the consensus. What most historians believe is that after failing to, after Mexico did not agree to, to let America purchase this land, that Polk deliberately provoked a war in order to take it by force. So Polk gets his war, the U.S.-Mexican War, which lasts from 1846 to 1848. In 1846, American rebels and U.S. forces captured California and they temporarily declared it the independent Bear Flag Republic, although it quickly came under American control. The U.S. then occupied New Mexico, and in 1847, at the end of the war, the U.S. actually invaded Mexico. They landed at this point here. If I can get my cursor to work. They landed at this point here and in the battles of Veracruz and then in Mexico City. So with the capture of their capital city, Mexico was defeated. And in 1848, a peace treaty ended the war. And that treaty was the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo. And this is one of the most important ideas from this lesson because the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo had a great effect on the United States. First of all, it sets the border between Mexico and the U.S. at the Rio Grande. So the U.S. gets the border that they want. Secondly, Mexico gives up all claims to Texas, so Mexico is finally forced to deal with the loss of Texas to the United States. And one of the most important things to come out of this is the Mexican Cession, where the United States receives a, a great deal of territory, pretty much all of Mexico's northern territory north of the Rio Grande. And that is the Cancun states, which I say that because that helps us remember them. The Cancun states are California, Arizona, Nevada, Colorado, Utah, and New Mexico, plus a little bit of Wyoming. So we might also say Cancun plus W. The last term of the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo is that the U.S. agrees to pay Mexico $15 million to settle any land claims or any disputes that came out of the war. Because remember, there are Mexican citizens living on this territory. It also grants that any Mexican citizens living within the, the Mexican session will be granted U.S. citizenship and their property, rights, their property rights will be protected. And the last little piece of the puzzle for the continental United States is this part right here, the Gadsden Purchase, which is purchased in 1853 from Mexico. Now I say purchased because uh, the U.S. paid Mexico $10 million for this territory that is now the southern part of Arizona and New Mexico. And the reason the United States wanted the Gadsden Purchase was that they originally intended to run the Transcontinental Railroad south through the desert. So they purchased this territory from Mexico, and that finishes out what's called the Lower 48, the 48 Continental United States. So all the United States' territory has now been gained, except for Alaska and Hawaii, which will come much later. So we finish with our Lesson 33 Thoughts. First of all, how did the belief in manifest destiny influence U.S. leaders like James K. Polk during the mid-1800s, and how did they go about achieving manifest destiny? Number two, do you believe that the U.S. had just cause to go to war with Mexico? Use facts to support your answer. And finally, number three, how does the U.S.-Mexican War compare and contrast to the American Revolution and War of 1812, the U.S. previous wars before the U.S.-Mexican War? Well, that completes Lesson 33, and our next lesson is Trails West.